Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Shadows Over Mordheim. This is our series of weekly Mordheim battle reports, and this is battle report number 14. It is a weird hunt stone scenario that is fought between my two friends, Sister Serial, as well as Fresh Prince Bel Air. Sister Serial is playing the Iron Golems of the Pit Fighters, while Fresh Prince Bel Air is bringing the Shades of Nagareth, a Shadow Warriors warband. So we'll be throwing these two guys down in the middle of a weird hunt, a weird stone hunt uh, scenario. We're going to play some background music real quick. If you want to see exactly what my friends are bringing for the warbands for this one, go ahead and pause and take a look at your own leisure. So that being said, let's get this battle port on a roll. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. So the scenario rules for this one is called Weird Stone Hunt. What ends up happening is that D3 plus one Weird Stone shards are spread throughout the entirety of the battlefield. In this case, my friends rolled a three on this one, so because of that, there'll be four different shards of Weird Stone all over the battlefield. The goal is to retrieve the Weird Stones and to rout your enemies. For anybody for experience, for anybody who managed to get a Weird Stone counter, they get one point of experience. For each member of the warband that survives the scenario, they also earn another point of experience. Also, the winning warband leader also earns a bonus point of experience for winning the scenario. And then finally, heroes earn one point of experience for each enemy they put out of action. So with the scenario rules over, let's go and talk about the battle plan real quick. So there's an overhead shot in the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, my friends are playing on a 4x4 table. My friend Fresh Prince Belair is deployed on the near side of the table, while Sister Serial is deployed on the very far side of the table. And once again, pretty much the battle plan for my friends is to move maneuver as quick as they can to grab the Weird Stone Shards and also try to survive. Um, that's the only plan I really know that they're thinking of. Now, what they actually plan on doing with each of their movements, I can only speculate uh, because I'm the arbitrator in this campaign, so I'm only taking photos. I'm not fighting in this one. So with that being said, let's go and talk about uh, the rest of the uh, locations of different Weird Stone Shards. All right, so Weird Stone counter number one is on the third floor of this three-storied uh, ruined tower structure. It's right there on the very top. It's located in the bottom left-hand corner of the battlefield. In the center of the battlefield, we have Weird Stone counters number two and number three. Weird Stone counter number two is in the in the bed of that uh, cart there that's in the center of town, and Weird Stone counter number three is on the top of the aqueducts right in the middle of the battlefield. And finally, Weird Stone Counter Number 4 is located in the upper right hand corner of the battlefield on top of the Aqueduct system as well. So, with the Weird Stone Counters already deployed, let's go ahead and talk about deployment for each of the different warbands. Alright, so first of all, let's go talk about the deployment for the Shades and Nagareth. Over here on the far left-hand side of the battlefield is my friend uh, Fresh Prince Belair's left-hand deployment. Up in the front, he has Samael, which is a Shadow Warrior novice, is armed with uh, Spear and Shield, as well as Ramael the Silent Strider, uh, sorry, Toro the Silent Strider. He's a Shadow Warrior, he's got Shield, Longbow, as well as Sword. And then right behind him, of course, is Rahab, he's a Shadow Walker. He's got Light Armor, Shield, Longbow, and Sword. He's got a powerful build, as well as Heart and Skills. In the center of his deployment area, in the back there, that's Malkaia. He's a Shadow Walker. He's got Light Armor, Shield, Longbow, Sword, as well as a Sniper Special Rule. Our right next on the right-hand side, that is Castiel. That, oh, sorry, not Cast, on the left-hand side, I'm sorry. That's Castiel. That's his Shadow Warrior Novice, Armor Spear, as well as Shield. And to the right of him is Ramael, the Silent Strider. He's a Shadow Warrior, Armor Shield, Longbow, as well as a Sword. And finally, make up the far right-hand side of the deployment area. Up in the front, that is Raguel. He is a Shadow Walker. He's got Light Armor, Shield, Longbow, as well as a Sword. Right behind him is Silent Fane, who's an Elf Ranger. He's armed with Elf Bow, Sword, and Elven Cloak. He's also got the Seeker Special Rule, as well as the Excellent Sight Special Rule. Behind them is Raziel, which is the Shadow Master, who's the leader of this warband. He's equipped with Heavy Armor, Shield, uh, Helmet. He's got a Longbow, Great Weapon, as well as Powerful Build and Leader. And then right behind him is Duma, who is the Shadow Weaver. He's got a Horn Horn of Nagareth. He's got a Longbow Sword. He's also a Wizard with the Frenzy Special Rules. And his spawn this one is Shield of Shadow. And that pretty much makes the deployment for the uh, Sons of Nagareth. And across the battlefield in the center of the table is pretty much all Sister Serial's fighters for the Iron Golem. She's kind of put them all in one location for the most part. So starting on the left-hand side there, on the left-hand side we have... Uh, in uh, Enola, there we go, Enola Anvilweld. She's a pit fighter initiate. She's got a sword, shield, as well as pit fighter skill. Next on the right hand side, that is Varkoldus uh, Brell. She's a pit fighter initiate who's also equipped with sword, shield, as well as pit, uh, pit fighter special rule. 
Right next door on the right hand side, it's Banner of Eld. He's a dwarf troll slayer. He's got twin dwarf axes. He's got the pit fighter, hard to kill, hard head, hates orcs and goblins, as well as grudge best, best rule. And to the right there, that is Dredge Borsha. He is an ogre pit fighter hero. He's got twin hammers, light armor. He's got the pit fighter, fear, large, as well as slow witted special rules. On the second row on the left hand side, that is Krola Elvec. He is a pursuer, armed with mace, shield, javelin. He's got the uh, pursuer special, he's got the uh, pit fighter special rule. In the center, that's Dron Elvec. He's another pursuer, armed with mace, shield, Shield Javelin as well as Pit Fighter Special Rule. And right behind him in the back, that is Varsk Ilvek, who's a pursuer, are with Mace, Shield Javelins, as well as a Pit Fighter Special Rule. Right in the center there, that is uh, Garn Dramnir. He is a Pit Fighter. Oh, sorry, that's Vasadun. There we go. He's a Pit Fighter veteran. He's got Shield Hammer, Light Armor, as well as a Pit Fighter skill. Uh, to the back right, that is Sever Greel, who's the Pit King, who's the leader of this war band. He's equipped with Great Weapon, Helmet, Light Armor. He's got the Leader, Pit Fighter, and Resilient skills. And next on the right hand side, that is Garn Dramnir. Near. She is a pit fighter veteran with war chain, mace, pit fighter, as well as the arms master skill. And that pretty much makes up Sister Serial's deployment for this one. So, with deployment over with, both of my friends go directly to the top of turn number one and they roll off for initiative to see which of them will be going first. All right, so we go directly to the top of turn number one, and the Pit Fighters mini get the initiative on this one. So Sister Serial goes first. She skips the recovery phase because there's no need for it. And the very first thing, of course, is that she starts moving her fighters as quickly as she can across the battlefield. First thing she does, she sends Dredge Borsha, her ogre uh, Pit Fighter, or running up 12 inches directly to the center of the battlefield, heading to that cart where the Weird Star Show number uh, two is located at. She also kind of does like this line formation of all her fighters heading directly towards the center as well. As you can see, uh, Vasadun, Garn, Dramir, as well as um, Sever Grill are making their way to the right-hand side of that little church with Battle of the Eld there, kind of outside the steps of the church. Meanwhile, her three pos uh, her three pursuers, Krola, Dran, and Varsk Ilvek, start making their way to the left to the base of the uh, aqueduct system. And finally, her two newly minted pit fighter initiates, e in uh, Enola, there we go, I'm already having a hard time with that name, Enola, Anvil Weld, as well as uh, Varkul de Brel. Uh, they take the ladder, so they move all the way to the top of the aqueduct system, and they wait, so that way they can make their way to uh, Weirdstone counter number four. And that pretty much makes up her move phase, as well as her shooting combat phase as well. So because that, we go directly to the bottom of turn number one for the Shadow Warriors. And as you can see here, my friend, Fresh Prince Belair, just starts moving his forces as well. First thing he does, he runs up Silent Fade to the top of the ladder, so that way he's over the wall, and putting in a good overwatch position. While that's occurring, Raziel, Duma, as well as Raguel move up as quick as they can, running towards the base of the ladder, so that way they can also join Silent Fade climbing over the ladder onto the top of the wall. Meanwhile, in the center of the table here, as you can see, uh, Melkaya, as well as Ramael, as well as Castiel move up as quick as they can over to the top of the wall as well, climb up the ladder, and making their way to the ruined three-story uh, tower structure on the uh, bottom right-hand corner of the battlefield. And last, as you can see in this one, Rahab, as well as Tora and Samael, they're moving as quick as they can directly to the base of the aqueduct system on the far bottom left-hand corner of the battlefield, heading to the ladder so that way they can start climbing up it and start moving across the battlefield as well. And that pretty much makes up turn number one for my friends on this one. So here's an overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield at the end of turn number one. And as you can see, my friends have elected to kind of throw a caution in the wind. They're just moving as quickly as they can, running their fighters as fast as they possibly can in order to secure those weird stone objectives. So you can see there at the, on the very the top there, the uh, uh, pit fighters are making their way to secure objective counters number two as well as number four. So that way they can get those weird stone shards. At the same time that's occurring, the elves are starting to assault from the wall on the base of the wall, heading to the upper hand corner as well as the center of the battlefield. At the same time, uh, my friend Fresh Prince Bel-Air is also sending his four to the bottom of the aqua ducts, that way they can climb up and start infiltrating through as well. So with the end of turn number one over with, we go directly to the top of turn number two. So we go directly to the top of turn number two, and once again the pit fighters are going first, and this photo is taken after the move phase. And the reason why is because there's no need for a recovery phase at this point. And as you see, all three pursuers of the Ilvex, uh, they just basically decide to move up their double moon allowance uh, to the base of those buildings right there, kind of like occupying either side of the alley. And the reason why is because right behind that alley on the other side is where the elves are starting to storm across the wall. So they don't want to be in the field of fire for their very first turn, but they can also kind of peek around the corner and throw their javelins uh, later on. At the exact same time, her pit fighter initiates also move up in order to secure their objectives. Over on the left hand side, that is Enola Anvil Will. She managed to secure her uh, very first uh, Weirdstone counter, earning herself a new point of experience. And at the same time, uh, Varkolda uh, Vark uh, Vark Brel, she runs up as quick as she can along the length of the aqueduct system, making her way to the center of the battlefield to grab objective marker number two. Meanwhile, in the center square next to the objective marker that's right located in the middle of the cart there, as you can see, Dredge Borshrek moves up to secure it. Same thing with the rest of them. So Sever Grill, Guard, Dramnir, Vasadun, as well as Matter of the L, they just kind of move in in order to secure this area and to make sure that no one takes their uh, loot counter. 
And that pretty much makes up Sister Seal's entire turn. All she does is a bunch of running as well. She really did for the most part. So that takes us to regular turn number two for the Shadow Warriors. And once again, my buddy Fresh Prince Belair starts moving his forces forward as well. But this time, he doesn't run them. He just moves up their normal moon allowance. So because of that, Rahab, uh, sorry, not Rahab, Duma, Raziel, as well as Raguel, as well as Silent Fane, uh, they only move up their normal moon allowance because they're using the ladder to climb to the top of the wall and kind of make a firing line so that way they can fire through. And as you can see, that's the alleyway at the top there that leads directly to the uh, three pursuers on the other side of that is where the other three pursuers are located at. Meanwhile, for the rest of the movement phase here in the center of the battlefield, as you can see, uh, my friend decides to basically center his forces along the top of the aqueduct there as well. So you can see there's Samael as moving a little bit to the uh, Samael as well as, um, what's his name, Torah the Silent Strider, Ramiel the uh, Silent Strider, Ragu, uh, Malkaya, Rahab, uh, those characters are all basically kind of standing right there in the tower there, getting a good line of sight directly towards um, the pit fire initiates from the top of the aqueducts as well. So with the move phase are with, they go directly to the shooting phase. Unfortunately for my friend Freshman's Belair though, most of the shooting phase is pretty much a wash. Almost everybody of his, or every one of his shots either missed or if they didn't miss, uh, they fell to wound. Except for one, that was uh, that was Malkaya. Malkaya does manage to get a critical injury off directly onto um, uh, Varkolda. There we go. I'm getting these names really mixed up really bad. I do apologize. So Varkolda Braille, she manages to get hit as well as wounded as well. And she immediately goes out of action. Luckily for Sister Sarah though, she makes a full recovery. So she's perfectly fine. But this nests the first blood for the High Elves against their pit fighter opponents. So we skip combat phase because it was in combat and that takes us directly to the end of turn number two. And here's that overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, the elves are starting to take an offense on the top there of the, uh, of the aqueduct system, making their way down the center, trying to uh, push towards the uh, pit fighters as well. At the same time, First Prince Belair is also establishing a base of fire there on the top right-hand corner, along the top of the wall, so that way you can start putting some pressure onto the right-hand flank of the pit fighters as well. Meanwhile, Sister Serial is kind of struggling to keep her force on the top of the aqueducts as well as securing her objective markers on the ground level in the middle of the town square where the car is located at. So at the end of turn number two, we go directly to the top of turn number three. So that takes us directly to the top of turn number three and the pit fighters are going first once again and this photo is taken after the move phase because there's no recovery phase necessary for this point. And the first thing that Sister Sarah does is that she starts moving out her forces and starts pulling away from the aqueduct on the right hand side. First of all, she uh, selects e uh, Enola Anvilweld who is the uh, pit fighter initiate who can manage to secure the, uh, the uh, ejector marker. She actually runs along the top of the aqueduct and down the ladder to the base of it trying to escape with her little weird stone counter. At the same time, Sister Sarah also uses Krola, Dran, and Varskill Vec. All three of those guys move their normal moon allowance directly into the middle of the alley so that way they can start chucking their javelins directly into the high elves who are standing along the top of the wall. And then as insane as it was sound, my friend decides to actually set up her forces and actually have them climb up the side of the walls, taking initiative tests for both Garn Dramnir as well as Voss Hadun on that one as well. So you can see there, Garn Dramnir manages to take point, and right behind her is Voss Hadun, and those two pit fighter veterans have scaled the top of the wall, passing their initiative checks and just making their way to the top, looking like bosses at the same time this is occurring. And for the last of Sister Serial's move phase, she then uh, has uh, Dredge, Borsha, Sever Grill, as well as Man of the L. They run as quick as they can to the top right hand corner of the battlefield. It looks like what my friend's planning on doing is she plans on sending these three warriors around to the other flank of the High Elves and attacking from the top of the Aqueduct. It looks like what she's planning on doing on the, this portion of the move phase. So, with the move phase are with, they go directly to the shooting phase. And unfortunately for our friend Sister Serial, the shooting phase is pretty much a wash for the most part. She did manage to score a wound against Raziel, the leader of the uh, Shades of Nagrath, but that was really about it for the most part. Other than that, the rest of her shots pretty much missed. And since nobody's in close combat, we skip combat and we go directly to the bottom of turn number three for the High Elves. Alright, so that takes directly to the bottom of turn number three for the Shadow Warriors. And as you can see in this photo, my friend uh, Fresh Prince Belair decides to press the advantage. Uh, he decides he doesn't want to let these guys go, so he runs up a couple of characters. First of all, he runs up Silent Fane as well as uh, Raguel. Those two guys move as quickly as they can across the catwalk, directly to the roof of the Rune building across from them. However, he decides to leave uh, Dumael, uh, Duma as well as Raziel decides to leave them both exactly located at because I think my friend's going to plan on having them shoot with their longbows directly at the uh, three pursuers there in the alleyway as well. Meanwhile, Castael, which is the uh, Shadow Warrior novice, he managed to secure his objective marker and he runs back directly to the base of the wall so that way he can escape with the loot that they've carried and not worry about losing it for the most part. And in this photo, the rest of the forces start moving down directly down the aqueduct directly to the uh, to the pit fighter. So in the front there, of course, you got Rahab. Right behind him, of course, you have the uh, Shadow Warriors as well. Also followed by Micaiah. And the left-hand side there, you can see Samael making his way down the gangplank directly to that room building to intercept Dredge Borsha as well as the rest of the pit fighters flanking them from the left. 
And once again, shooting phase is pretty much a wash for my buddy Fresh Prince Belair. Unfortunately, he just failed all of his hits, or the ones that he did hit, he failed to wound. The only thing he was able to get off, though, was uh, Shield of Shadow. So that way, it gives himself, uh, you know, do my cast that on uh, Raziel. So that way, Raziel has a plus one uh, five award save uh, to gain a shot at for this turn as well, to protect him from those uh, pursuers. And since nobody's in combat phase, just get combat phase, and that takes directly to the end of turn number three. Alright, so that takes directly to the end of turn number three. As you can see in this photo, for the most part, the pit fighters are trying to flank on the left hand side of the aqueduct to that ruined building, as well as pull away on the right hand flank, while at the same time pressing their advantage in the center, uh, drag rather right that very last weird stone shard. Meanwhile, my buddy Fresh Ones Belair is of course reacting to that. He's got a good base of fire of elves on the right hand flank, as well as guys assaulting on the top of the aqueduct. He's also sent one of his shadow warrior novices to intercept them on the gangplank there to stop the dredge portion of the rest of his fighters from flanking on the left hand side. And that pretty much makes up turn number three for this one. And with that, we go directly to the top of turn number four for the Pit Fighters. And then, this is where things get kind of interesting. Sister Serial decides not to press the attack. She decides to pull back as quick as she possibly can. So you can see here, Dredge Borsha, Sever Grill, as well as Man of the Elves. Instead of continuing to the left to assault the flank of the High Elves, they immediately turn a hook right and start running their way directly back to their deployment area as well, pulling further away from the High Elves and pretty much breaking contact for the most part. And the exact same thing happens here in the middle as well. Uh, Vas Hadun as well as uh, uh, Dran Gramnir, they both managed to pass their initiative text, uh, test. So they both go sliding down the length of the top of the uh, aqueduct down to the ground. And see they're now back on the ground level, facing back into Sisyseria's own deployment area. Looks like they're trying to break contact as well. And me on the left hand side, all three brothers of the Ilvec, uh, that's Dran, Varsk, as well as Krola, they all run back eight inches as well, pulling away from the left hand flank, uh, attacking the uh, characters on the base of the wall, moving past the aqueducts and making their way directly to their deployment zone. And she does exactly the same thing with Enola uh, Anvilwell. She basically takes her uh, Weird Stone Shard and moves directly back to the middle of her deployment zone as well. Looks like Sister Sarah is pretty much retreating from all contact against the High Elves. So, a third turn over with, you go directly to the bottom of the turn for the High Elves. So here's a close-up of the move phase of the High Elves. As you can see, both Fane, uh, Silent Fane, as well as Raguel, they make it directly to the top of the uh, Aqueduct system, so that way they can do some long-range shooting and try to engage some of the uh, of the pit fighters to try and escape from them. Meanwhile, Raziel, as well as uh, Dumas, they basically just stay exactly where they're located at because there's no need for them to move at this point. And along the center of the battlefield, my friend First Prince Belair starts pursuing as best he can. He sends uh, Malkaia as well as his two Shadow Warriors along the top of the aqueducts, so that way they can shoot down directly at the fleeing pit fighters down below. At the same time, Rahab as well as his uh, Shadow Warrior novice start making their way down the gangplank to the left-hand side to try to outflank the High Elves as well. And unfortunately, that pretty much makes it the turn as well. My friend's uh, Fresh Prince Belair, his shooting was pretty much a wash. No shooting took place at all, and plus since no one's engaged in close combat, that pretty much ends the combat phase on this one. So we go directly to the top of turn number five, and as you can see in this one, uh, the game basically ends. And the reason why is because Sister Serial once again starts moving her forces as well, moving directly back to her deployment area as well. Uh, Sister Serial managed to steal three of the Weirdstone counters, and so what her plan is, as she was talking to uh, War, uh, Fresh Prince Belair, she's like, I'm just going to keep running. I'm not going to try to fight you. I just, I desperately need the credit of the gold, the gold pieces, so I'm just going to try to evade you as long as I possibly can and not engage in close combat or shooting at all. And it's, uh, it's kind of weird because my friend Fresh Prince Belair is like, really, that's, you're going to run away she goes yeah i'm just gonna run because i need to use these weird stone shards uh for my warband because her warband is pretty low tier at this point so at that point my friend buddy first principal really realized they won't be able to catch up to her so at this point he also kind of calls the game as well and the reason why the pit fighters do win even though they're retreating is because they do have more of the weird stone counters than the high elves do and that pretty much draw the conclusion to this game so with this game over with we go directly to the post game and talk about exactly what happened to each of the warbands Alright, so first of all, we're going to talk about the Shades of Nagareth. For injuries, none of the members of the Warband got injured on this one, so they're perfectly fine. Meanwhile, two members of the Warband also had, uh, advanced. Duma the Shadow Weaver leveled up, learning the Cloak of Darkness spell. At the same time, Castiel and Semiel, which are the uh, two Shadow Warrior novices, they also leveled up as well, getting plus one to their toughness. So those guys are now toughness for High Elves, which is absolutely terrifying to face against. During the exploration phase, uh, they managed to find four additional shards of weird stone out there. At the same time, they managed to find prisoners as well. And as a reward for turning those prisoners in, they are they are nine gold pieces. And out of that whole prisoners exploration special role, they also recruited a new shadow warrior named Zephon out of that group as well. At the trading post, they sold their weird stone for 90 gold pieces. And what they did with that money is they rehired Silent Fane, the uh, elf ranger. At the same time, they also purchased the standard of Nagareth, light armor, and sword for their newly recruited Shadow Warrior Zephon. So because of that, they now have another Shadow Warrior. 
and he is their battle center bearer for this warband as well. Their new record now is at one win as well as three losses and the new rating now is at 165 points. And finally, we go to the Iron Golems on this one. And for the injuries, uh, Varkolda Brell was the only one who got injured on this one, but she made a full recovery, so no harm, no foul. Meanwhile, for advancements, five members of her warband did advance. Vasadun got plus one to her weapon skill. Banner the Eld learned the Mighty Blow skill, so he gets plus one strength when he goes into combat. Dredge Borsha also got the Resilient skill, which means that attacks against him are what minus one strength. Enola Anvilwild, which is the uh, initiate who managed to get the uh, blue counter, she gets plus one to her toughness, so she's toughness four now. And the pursuit of Krola, Drad, and Varsk Elvek, they leveled up as well, and they got plus one to their attacks, so now they're living deadlier in close combat as well. During the exploration phase, she managed to find four additional st weird stones on top of the three that she managed to get from the scenario, and she also found an overturned cart, and found telling cold pieces in that as well. At the training post, she sold all four seven shards of weird stone, knitting 110 gold pieces, and with her 10 or 10 gold pieces, as well as the pieces that she had in her treasury, she purchased light armor for Garn, Dramnir, Varkolda, Brel, Enola, Avonwell, as well well as all three pursuers, Krolet, Dren, and Varscale Vec as well, making it a little bit tougher to kill in close combat and with shooting. Her new record now is at three wins as well as zero losses, and her new warband rating now is at 139 points. So that's good to do for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.